the BEMS has rated our show. Like, comment, and subscribe. Do it. Bacon commands you. Good evening, and welcome to the R Rated Cast with your host, Calico. Welcome to the Bamsters Broadcasting Corporation upcoming games. Draconis, over to you. Hola. How are you doing today, Calico? Doing well, doing well, thank you. And yourself? Oh, not too bad. I was uh, pouring over our notes here and looking at the things that are coming out for the month of April. So uh, I guess maybe I'll just we'll just jump right into it and hit these as they come along. Yes, so, sounds good. First one up is a release on Steam called The Haunting of Baskerville. And uh, it's it looks to be an adventure game similar to uh, kind of, I almost want to say like an upgraded kind of mist kind of thing. But they, looking at the uh, material from it, it's also talking like it's got some kind of Lovecraftian type themes to it as well. Well, from the sounds of it, Baskerville's is um, Sherlock Holmes-esque country, isn't it, really? Yes. So, what more could you want? Sort of uh, Holmes lore, maybe? Mixed in with Lovecraft? Maybe an appearance from the Hound itself? Yeah, I haven't seen too many details on it, which for a game like this I wouldn't necessarily want to prior to playing it, but that would be kind of cool to have some kind of Easter eggs or nods to, uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes-esque type things. With that much of a nod in the name of it, you know, Baskerville, you've got to have something, surely. <laughs> So this one, uh, it comes out on Steam on April 9th. Only Steam? I didn't see a listing for it otherwise. Okay, so console players are being a little bit left out on this front. So what do we got next? Next up is an interesting game called Extinction. And it's not, uh, it's not the kind of game I've played too much of. Uh, it's, it's an action game where you know, you're running around third person. Those I've played plenty of. But this looks like the combat focus is on these massive giants that you end up taking on. Uh, and, you know, the occasional critter around them. There's some really cool parkour type moving where you're, you know, jumping across buildings. Or um, climbing up on buildings and whatnot. It looks kind of a neat game. That one's going to be out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on the 10th. Well, I looked at uh, some of the screenshots for that. And, yeah, you're right, it does look... I would say kind of Prince of Persia in the movement mechanics, I would say. But as far as I know, that the it's kind of like, um, oh, what was that classic game? So classic that I can't remember it. Colossus. It the, yeah, Shadow of the Colossus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty much like a, it's kind of that sort of thing that it's going for, isn't it? It's the, the David versus Goliath sort of storyline-ish where in this case an extinction as far as i know you're protecting villages from these giant ogres but you've got to get rid of all the little minions first all the orcs goblins and gargoyles before you can even get anywhere near the ogre so that should be quite good i just hope it doesn't just turn into a grind fest and then <laughs> the same moves over and over again to kill the ogre that'll be a bit boring i think a bit rinse and repeat some of them looked a little bit different and i don't know if they'll have different combat styles but yeah definitely it looks to certainly have some uh, Shadow of the Colossus inspiration in there with, you know, climbing up on some of these guys and how you combat them. It's a pretty impressive one clip I see, you know, the guy's running around with his sword and he cuts the leg off a giant. I, I think the leg was actually larger than the sword, but he still manages to do it in a single swipe. <laughs> that is impressive. Although, considering what it is, I don't even know if they have or not, but I would really like to see an Attack on Titan game crossover from the anime because if you're going to do this david and goliath thing you, know, you for those of you that may or may not have seen it similar sort of thing a city's being attacked by giants all right next up on april 11th we have a game that i think would really be up uh, yours and bam's alley although i you know i don't think i'd mind taking a look at this one either it's called maelstrom it's a third person action game ship to ship combat you know so, so this is like sailing ships the old school you know pirate type ships uh, we've seen How old do you think I am? <laughs> I didn't say you sailed those old ships. I just said that I thought this game would be up your alley. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. So we're in the age of sail. Is it fantasy setting or we look at the Caribbean or are we Indian Ocean? Man, I hope it's a fantasy setting. <laughs> you basically, as you're flying out, you get the, or no, sorry, not flying, sailing out. Uh, at times you encounter these Pacific Rim-type creatures in the middle of the ocean that come up out of the water. Cool. 
Yeah, so I, it, it looks to add a little bit more to it than just, uh, you know, ship to ship. We, we've seen similar games like this with uh, regards to things like Unearned Bounty, which is kind of a cool free-to-play game. That one has a real cartoony feel. This one, it, it's, it's still a little bit cartoony, but it's also a little bit more refined kind of towards realism, but not exactly. It looks pretty neat. This this ought to be interesting to check out. Well, if I remember correctly, I remember destroying your ship in Unearned Bounty a few times, Drax, so if it's anything like that, then it should be quite good fun. I mean, we all do like uh, a good bit of privateering, especially for those that play Sea of Thieves. And also we've got some other ones as well. Uh, Abandoned Ship recently released last month, or well, the month of February it did. And also... Uh, Skull and Bones, I think, is the next one coming out from the uh, some creative thoughts from Assassin's Creed, but that's that's way down the line. So the gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> Most certainly, I think one once one developer has success with pirating, all the others try and jump on the bandwagon, don't they? Really, and try and make as much money, do it to death, and then you never see another pirate game for another twenty years. Or at least 10 years, like in the case with... Uh, do you remember Sid Meier's Pirates at all on the Xbox or PC? No, I don't think I've really played too many Sid Meier's games. But uh, when I was talking about the gauntlet being thrown, I was talking about you tossing your gauntlet at my feet. <laughs> oh, well, if you don't want to accept the challenge, then uh, no, I'll, I'll have that gauntlet back. <laughs> so I, uh, I guess we're both going to have to pick this one up so I can kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to have to find a game that we both like. So are there any more on this list that you think might be a good sort of uh, arena for you and I to have our little tete-a-tete? Well, as far as the ones we have on the list for next month, uh, I don't necessarily see anything that would be for that. But uh, That's a shame. But what do we have? Well, next up, we've got God of War. I don't play too much on my console, but I know a lot of you guys on the rest of the show do. And God of War is one of those I almost feel like we can't not mention. <laughs> it's it's Definitely that one's going to be a big one. Yeah. Well, I've played God of War and I enjoyed it. So speaking of gauntlets being thrown, this one, Kratos isn't throwing the gauntlet down at the Greek pantheon. This time he's throwing it at the Norse pantheon. So I quite like to see if he gets to heft Molnia at all. <laughs> mew, mew. Or if he gets to... <laughs> <laughs> Mew Mew. Oh, God. <laughs> I, you know, I... Does this, I, does this version of Molnia happen to have a furry tail and cat ears, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, the cutie kid version, right? Ah, uh, right, the Avengers for the under fives. Yeah, my daughter would love to have a little cat hammer like that. Uh, I, to be honest, I wouldn't trust mine at all. They'll be too busy beating the living shit out of each other with it. I'd have to take it off within five minutes. <laughs> nice. Although they'd probably enjoy being Thor and Captain America, but yep, we're going off topic again. Damn you, Drac. You're doing it. You're doing it again. Oh, well, sure. It's my oh. fault. <laughs> well, uh, here's something that you might not necessarily need to take away from your kids. That, I guess, depends on whether or not you have or would get a Switch. But Nintendo Switch has... Uh, they released a video for this a little while back, and it's... It, it's an interesting idea. Basically, they, they call it Labo, and they're releasing their variety kit and their robot kit on the 20th of April. And for anyone who hasn't seen what this is, if you were a kid and you ever constructed anything out of a cardboard box, or your kids like playing with cardboard boxes, you're going to love this. Uh, it's You construct these things out of cardboard and then hook up the switch in... in various different ways with the cardboard construction and then use that to play games and the, the robot kit is really cool because it's it, you construct this whole big thing and you end up like wearing part of it and it's you're you're basically acting out as the robot in the game nice so almost like an introduction to vr without the headset and the motion sickness <laughs> yeah something like that yeah it's it's just it's really neat how this whole thing, how they're putting this whole thing together. And they have, you know, the variety kit's got a, a bunch of different things. You can do a fishing game. Um, there's some kind of house game where uh, 
Yeah, there's. Um, I've seen adverts for that. It's almost like you've got this little um, fluffy creature that you can change its surroundings, can't you, by adding or removing different blocks and different connections and doing combinations do different things. Yep. Yeah, they even have like a little piano, which I thought was wild. Like you're going to construct this little piano out of cardboard and be able to play that on the screen. But uh, another cool one is you make this little moped kind of thing and and then i think you can use that to actually play mario kart nice so it's kind of almost in a way that they're not only bringing it into creativity and kind of adding that extra dimension to games consoles but it's also i suppose in a way a form of recycling so green maybe well could be i mean if your kids get ideas on things that maybe they can build without having to buy the kit <laughs> yeah I, I know that when you purchase this stuff it comes with a kit so you get the the cardboard sheets and stuff which those could be made of recycled material though well i would only hope so being uh the big name brand last thing they would want is some sort of uh you know, headline in the newspapers or on the internet saying that all their stuff is from like virgin trees and they've just made homeless, you know, thousands of baby jaguars or something. Yeah, that's the last thing they need, so I would imagine it would be recycled. Well, since it's cardboard, you'd expect it to break down pretty easily, too, so, uh, you know, once uh, the kids are done with all of it, you know. <laughs> By done, you mean in a crumbled heap on the floor because they've uh, bashed it too hard or something. Right. <laughs> Got a little too frustrated with the game. Yeah, spilled, spilled their juice on it. Hopefully not with the Switch inside of it. Ooh, yeah, can you imagine that? I, I can imagine, um, but yeah, no. <laughs> I, I would not I would not be a happy camper at that point. Uh, no. How much do those things cost you? I mean, how much are we looking at for the Switch and the kit? You know, uh, are, there, are they actually giving out any debt prices yet? Uh, let's see. That Well, for the Switch itself, it was, uh, what was it, 3 three. 50, I think it was. I can't remember now. I bought mine a little over a year ago. But um, each one of the kits, I think I saw one was like 60 or 80 bucks. Uh, but don't quote me on that because I'd have to go find it again to be sure. Okay, so we're probably looking in the region of anywhere between 150 all the way up to about $400 then in that sort of ballpark to get a brand new Switch and one of these kits together. Right. Yeah, here it is. One one of the kits, the uh, variety kit with the fishing game and the racing game and, and the other things, the piano and whatnot, that's $70. The robot kit is $80. Oh, wow. That's expensive cardboard. It is, but if you haven't seen videos, uh, when we're done here, definitely go check it out. Look at the Nintendo Labo robot kit and just look at the video for that. That is so cool. <laughs> I have to admit, I did see some videos, but the only one I saw was of the uh, creature in its house, which I thought was cool anyway. You know, it's kind of like an interactive Tamagotchi, but with better graphics. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, what's next on our list? Uh, next up, one that I think you told me you're you're a little more familiar with this than I am. I've seen, I don't know, maybe one of the Adventure Time cartoons. Uh, it's not something I ever really got into or followed, but uh, Adventure Time Pirates... And I'm pausing because I'm trying to figure out how I want to try and pr butcher pronounce this name. <laughs> Pirates go of the Ek Ekerondian. <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. We'll go with the uh, name that sounds vaguely like a tropical STI. But yep. So as far as I know, or as far as I've seen, um, the land of Ooh has been flooded. And Finn and Jake have got to gather a motley band of pirates and they've got to investigate meeting up against the usual like the ice king um we see marceline in some of the screenshots who's part of their crew so it looks like we're seeing a lot of the regular characters from the tv show all being represented in this game and basically all they've got to do is investigate why who has flooded and do as they do put a stop to it usually with a lot of hijinks and comedy along the way so Here's a, well, actually, okay, before I ask that question, I will say this. It's coming out on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on April 24th, or at least we're guessing with PC it will also be April 24th. I've found release dates for each of the consoles, but didn't find an actual date in Steam. In Steam, it just lists April, so we're assuming it'll be the same day. But, uh, so this, this makes me curious, though. This is at least the second pirate game that we've seen here. W what day of the year is Talk Like a Pirate Day? Is that in April? 
Uh, I'd have to look it up, to be honest. Um, it might actually be, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm just kind of wondering with with all these pirate games coming out. <laughs> we just had Sea of Thieves. Uh, yeah. You mentioned, what was it, Skull and Bones, and I think there's another Skull one called... Skull and Bones, Abandoned yeah, Black, Ship. Yeah, Black Sail, I think, is supposed to be coming yeah. out soon. Yeah, there's a whole whole raft of them, to uh, excuse the pun. <laughs> Well, all right, I'll get us back on track then. So uh, moving on from Pirates to Punks, a game called Frostpunk. This will be available on Steam on April 24th. And this is probably something that I would say would definitely be up, I think, G's Alley, possibly yours as well. It's a city-building simulation survival and strategy type game. Okay. So it, it takes so place in a... Looking... Sorry, are we looking like uh, along the lines of SimCity for the city building, or are you looking more like um, Banished, Stone Hearth, sort of smaller scale village slash town building, but with survival? Now, when you say survival, are we talking that the village has to survive, or are we taking control of characters? What's, what's, what's the general goings on? Well, basically, I'd say I think this is probably on somewhat of a smaller scale. If, um, but then I've not really played too much of the city building game, so I don't have a lot of background knowledge on that. But this takes place in some kind of frozen world, and uh, basically, uh, the technology that exists is all steam-powered type technology. And you you basically work as the city ruler. You've got to manage, you know, all the little people, the inhabitants, the infrastructures, and stuff like that, and, and I guess keep everyone alive. Okay, so possibly like more akin to Northgard then would you say possibly I only just started playing that one I haven't even gotten that far into that one yet but that one's been kind of interesting of course I like stuff that's you know got a Norse theme to it can't go wrong with Vikings because everybody knows Vikings certainly love their beer <laughs> mead mead that's right mead <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if they had bacon as well because that just that just make the whole Viking sort of idea just just perfect wouldn't it mead and bacon damn that sounds good <laughs> well especially if you to uh, mix that bacon with say maple syrup and pancakes now you're getting me to drool this is not fair do I need to get a bib for you <laughs> yeah, you just might <laughs> so we've gone pirates we've gone Norse we've gone Greek mythology with Kratos where are we not gonna touch uh, you know, I, I, I would say probably based on the topic of our, our next game, Nowhere. <laughs> South Park, The Fractured Butthole. <laughs> I still think that name is hilarious. Now, this this well, one's been out on the PS4 already and, and other platforms, but this will be releasing on the Switch on the 24th of April. So, the wholesome, family-orientated games console has sold its soul to the devil. And... It's touching everything. It is touching everywhere. It's like a cross between, well, a, probably a Game Boy and Herbert the Pervert, basically, as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, with the Skyrim is on the Switch. I, I thought I saw somewhere, I might be remembering wrong, but I thought I saw something about Doom going to be on the Switch, or maybe somebody was testing to see if they could run Doom on the Switch, or maybe it was just a rumor, but... It's funny because it's a cartoon game, but it's it's definitely not your typical kid game. I mean, this is uh, this kind of stuff is more targeted towards adults as far as the humor and stuff that's built into it. Yeah, just a bit. I mean, I had the pleasure of playing a short spell on it on the PS4, and yeah, there is no way I would let any of my kids, uh, especially the younger ones, play that because I want to have the pleasure of warping their little minds, not having a game do it for me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I watched Bam so, play a little bit of this on the on the stream, but um, I, oh, man, that's I, right, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't think I've even watched. It? Yeah, I don't think I've even watched uh, South Park in years now. I have to admit, I'm a little behind on the episodes or at least the seasons. I think the last season I watched was 13, and we're up to what 20 now. I think. Dear God, it's 20 seasons. I think so. Bam will be the better one to talk to. He's he's basically got like a, a little uh, Terence and Philip shrine in his house. You know, despite what he tells you secretly, his kids that he's got, he's actually named them Terence and Philip, even though one of them's a girl. Ah, uh, man. Like I needed another reason to feel old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, what? what's next on our list? Oh, what I was going to say is why don't you lead the next one in? It'll be the Battletech update. Oh, yes. Battletech. 
Now, I believe in one of our previous episodes, you and I had a little chat about the Battletech universe, or at least Mech Warrior, and we had a little touch on this uh, release. This current uh, game is a turn-based strategy game in the Battletech universe, set sometime, I think, before the third and fourth succession wars, but after the fall of Comstar. Not Comstar, the... Um, Good grief, I forget the name of it all, but the uh, United Empire that united humanity in the cosmos. Um, I'm probably sure there'll be one or two, and the comments might be able to correct me on my failing memory. That's another sign of age, isn't it? Good grief, next comes the incontinence. Oh, wait, no, crap, there it goes. Um, so, basically, you're a deposed noble. Your planet's been taken over by one of the major houses, and you want it back. So, you hire a band of mercenaries and you go and wage a campaign against tyrant that has taken over your world and try and free your people in the process. Now from the trailers that I've seen there might be two ways that you can go about doing this um, because the wording is such that the, the the voiceover says you can either do it for the honor or, or for the prestige or if that doesn't take your fancy you can do it for the money. So to me it seems like if you're running this mercenary outfit there may be missions that you could take sort of um, on gratis you know for free to kind of help this war effort and maybe that will gain you better benefits later. Sure Short-term benefits will be gimped because you're not getting the money, which means maybe that will affect the happiness of your mech warriors. Who knows? But that's releasing 24th of April, and I am certainly looking forward to it. Yeah, that'll be out on Windows and Mac OS. But you know what? I definitely like playing as a mercenary. It, it really frees you up as to the kinds of decisions you feel, you know, okay to make with, you know, a character where you're not stuck in the, say, hero trope. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, isn't that half the problem that most people had with, say, Fallout 4? You know, you're kind of forced into either exceptionally goody-two-shoe responses to 90% of the conversations or, you know, at worst, a slightly sarcastic, you know, pissed-off version, and that was it. You know, there, there was no truly evil version, unlike the other games where you could just literally murder your way across the wasteland and still complete the game. You know, this time. But you still had missions and still had people that you could talk to. You know, if you murdered your way across the wasteland, you could join up with mercenary groups. You could join up with the raiders and the bandits in a meaningful way. They became quest hubs, whereas now it's nah. But that's something different completely. That's a discussion for another day. So, have we got anything left on this little list of ours? We have one more left. Uh, this one will also release on the 24th of April for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And this one is called The Swords of Ditto. I included this one on the list, uh, not so much because it's it's something that any of us typically play on a regular basis, but mostly because I'd played another game not too far back uh, called It'll Do. And this has the same kind of feel to that. It's uh, very cartoony looking. It's a, like a top-down, almost you know, kind of isometric look to it uh, as far as the angle that you're at. And it reminds me a lot of we'll say the, uh, the the Zelda game for, um, I think it was not the Super Nintendo, it was the one that was after, maybe it was Super Nintendo. Yeah, I think maybe it was Super Nintendo, the Zelda game for the Super Nintendo, with that style of adventure and, and you know, work running around in a fantasy world, except that it's, you know, this real cartoony look to it. Okay, so do we know much about the storyline, the setting, or, you know, whether it's going to be you know, how, how involved are we within the whole thing? I didn't get too much into the actual story itself, but um, another cool thing about it was you can play the game by yourself if you want, or you can bring in a friend. You can play a cooperative mode. So uh, it's basically, it, it, it looks like it's one of these, you know, adventure and, and dungeon delving type games. But, you know, the, the thing that stood out to me was just how much it kind of looked like the It'll Do game that I had played, which is the same kind of thing. Okay. Well, it's always good to see co-op is making not so much a comeback, but it's it's being considered by a lot of developers now because it seems to be that the trope at the minute is it's got to be multiplayer or nothing at all. You know, and the single player kind of gets left as an afterthought or you get single player orientated games, but there's no co-op. 
And it's, not, it's nice to see that they're doing co-op as well. I always find it uh, a bit more interesting if you're playing with friends going through a single-player campaign. It adds another dimension to what you're experiencing. Yeah, so it's, it's always good to see the co-op being considered. And can you imagine Fallout? And I'll keep going back to it, but it is definitely a genre that I would like to see being cooperative. Can you imagine traveling around the wastelands Instead of having your band of AI raiders or Brotherhood of Steel or any other NPC faction kind of following you around and doing really dumb, stupid shit that gets themselves killed, you can have your friends do really dumb, stupid shit that gets themselves killed. You know, because that always <laughs> in, enhances a relationship, I find. Well, so, you know, you yeah. mentioned that, but the fact that Fallout didn't have co-op is one of the reasons why I didn't play it. Not because I didn't think I wouldn't enjoy it, but it's just I get so little time to play... Uh, these heavy story-based single-player games that I knew I probably wasn't even going to get a chance to get too far into it. I don't have anything against them. I think that, you know, story-based single-player games can be really great. I just wish that more of these companies that are putting those out would make them co-op just because usually when I do get some time to play, uh, it's it's I play with a couple buddies here and I would much rather do something just like that, go through the wasteland with a buddy. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean... To me, it wouldn't be hard to do, but it would just be a bit more time consuming. But who knows? I mean, they do say there are rumors that uh, Bethesda are making a Fallout style uh, MMO, which would be good to see. Then you truly could have your co-op, so to speak, then, couldn't you? Yeah, that would be pretty neat to check out. So I do believe uh, that is us. That is our list of everything that's coming up in April. Uh, there's actually quite a fair bit, uh, which is always good to see, a mix of platforms. So everybody gets to have something to look forward to from genres and all platforms, it seems. So thanks, as always. Uh, Drac, do you have anything else you would like to say? Yeah, I appreciate everybody sticking around. And as always, uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment there or on our website at bamsters.com. Excellent. I have been Calico, this has been Draconis, and this has been the Bamsters Broadcasting Corporation bringing you the R-Rated Podcast. 